Hey, do you have an FFI by chance? Yeah, I do actually. Dope. Think I can take a look at it? Sure thing. It's a BTC 4.0 and I'm asking 450,000 V-Bucks for it. It looks great. Would you do 420,000 V-Bucks for it? Sure, let's do it. What is up y'all? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Today, what I got for you guys is another Comic Con vlog. However, this is not your typical Comic Con. This vlog, if you couldn't tell by the intro, was completely virtual. And by virtual, this doesn't technically mean that I was in my VR headset, although I guess you probably could attend that way. But this con was 100% on Instagram, hosted by Ali and his crew via Elite Comics 11. I did buy some cool books. I got to hang out with my father-in-law, got to vlog some of those moments. At the end of this video, there will also be an unboxing from all that I bought at AtCon. Uh, so I hope that you guys stick around for that. AtCon is always a great time. I always enjoy watching, even if I'm not buying anything, because it's just a fun time. The community is great. It's just overall just a cool place to hang out if you're not really doing much. And as you can see, I am in a completely new space. We have moved. Um, I have this new office almost set up. Uh, so more to come with that. I'm, I've actually filmed a video. I'm um, setting this up I'm about halfway through the video. See a new poster. This poster was actually a purchase from Atcon. So that's one of them. Uh, but anyways, if you do enjoy the video, please hit that like button as it helps the channel a lot. If you're not already, hit subscribe because a big percentage of you guys aren't subscribed, so it'd mean a lot if you did that. And hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every single time that I upload a new video. And I hope you guys enjoy. It was crazy. All right, so they just sold Gus of Silver Age Comics, just sold a TOS 39. He had it for 20k, which is already under GPA. He sold it for 18.75k with and throwing in another book. I don't remember what book he threw in. It was another early TOS in like 8.0 raw. This is what I'm talking about. WonderCon man, Comic Cons. No, no Comic Con dealer is making that kind of a deal. They're 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 mocking you at the table. Right. If you, if yeah. You even offer something like that. Yeah. So that's why we held back our cash money. It's true. For at for for Atcon. Atcon baby. They feel like Atcon elite sellers are. They just want to put good books in your hands, and they don't want to get ripped off while doing it. And they don't want to rip you off while doing it, and make sure that like nobody gets ripped off while doing it. While you're at cons, it feels like they're trying to rip you off and put a book in your hands. Yeah, totally. How, how, when's the last time you walked away from a from a table at a convention feeling good about it? Yeah. You're like, did I get a good deal? Nah, I don't know, you know, and then you just move on. The, these guys want to move books. Yeah. Right, I'm going to get these. Yeah. Buy these uh, mangas. The end of the run is pretty tough, actually. It's a manga from out east, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're clever. Yeah. It's really... <laughs> so I have issue one, I think. Unless it's a totally different run. But still, the manga is dope. Nice, we got it. Look at this. We went to a Jim Starlin signing. <laughs> And his girlfriend, I don't know, I guess they like wrote a comic together. She was drunk out of her mind. And she signed this. She has no business signing anything related to Thanos. And look at this. She went round and round and round with that ink pen, man. <laughs> At Con Day 2, uh, we're here watching. Uh, Lino, host, logo for comics. Uh, I bought something small from him earlier. Uh, I just like bundled two Daredevil books. It was Daredevil 27. And I think it's like Daredevil 40 something, the one with um, Stiltman on the cover. Just like yellow and orange covers, so pretty dope. Um, and for Silver Age, get, get them both for 35. Plus shipping will be like 10 bucks. Not bad. You can never be upset with cheap silver age books no matter what it is and they were they weren't like low grade they were like six five 
think both of them he had graded at 6.5. So, and honestly, in my opinion, look, I may be a Daredevil super fan, but look, Daredevil books are severely underpriced at the moment. I think, I think Daredevil 1 is the most undervalued Silver Age key. Um, it's just, it's such a good, I mean, it's a first appearance the Daredevil run hasn't stopped since then. I mean, think about it this way. Okay, AF15 first appearance of Spider-Man. And you got ASM. ASM has ran all the way through. Look at how much even ASM1 is. ASM1 is crazy expensive. Not everybody can get their hands on it. Fantastic Four, FF1. FF run has gone all the way through till today. It hasn't slowed down, hasn't stopped at all. Uh, what else do we got? What are other Silver Age titles? Hulk. Hulk stopped. You know, I, I mean, I know that it's like low print runs, but still. Hulk had a gap. Hulk slowed down. Came back around. Boom. Hulk won. Crazy expensive. I don't. I actually don't know how much a Thor is, but I guess it's hard to... I guess it's kind of like hard to calculate that because you got Journey into Mystery, uh, which was a lot of Thor storylines, but... Um, so, we'll, we'll, Journey into Mystery, whatever the first appearance is of Thor, that book is crazy expensive. And he hasn't slowed down. Um, who, uh, what other titles? What, what am I missing here? We got Spider-Man. Uh, Captain America. Uh, that's kind of hard because you go into Golden Age, so it's not really like a fair. Uh, okay, what else we got? Captain America. Aven Avengers 1. Crazy expensive. You're paying like two, three grand for a low-grade graded copy. Like... But then every, everything after, like, Avengers 2 is, like, pretty cheap in comparison. Um, X-Men, X-Men 1, crazy price. And that whole in X-Men sucked until Claremont and Burn And, like, X-Men was crazy. And Daredevil 1, you can grab, a f I saw a 4, I think it was a 4 or 5 copy. I think it was on, it might have been on Elite. I don't know who it was, I, I think it was on Elite's Instagram page. I'm pretty sure it was going for like 2700 for a 4 or 5 Daredevil. Like, are you kidding me? And Daredevil has had some of the dopest storylines in all of comics. I mean, we're talking Frank Miller. We're talking Mark Wade. We're talking Chip Zdarsky. Like, just to name a few, some just incredibly fun, well-written storylines. Now, don't get me wrong, Daredevil has had his um, shame in some of the storylines, you know, the current run is a little, oh, you asked me, uh, can we get Zadarsky back, but anyways, still, like, the Daredevil has just had so many iconic storylines, arguably, I mean, the Miller Daredevil run might be, like, alongside the Claremont, it might be one of the most iconic storylines in all of comics like comment down below let me know what storylines you think like are some of the most iconic but i mean claremont x-men miller daredevil i mean those are like those those are no joke storylines and a daredevil one four or five for 20 call it 2800 i think that's what it was 28 you know i'm gonna just pull it up right now okay so look at it okay amazing fantasy 14 1.5 14,500 bucks, okay? Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Shoot, the first appearance of of freaking Wolverine costs more than the first appearance of Daredevil. And there's a bajillion of those copies on the census, bro. Like what? Okay, um, anyway, I'll keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Here it is. Dare, Daredevil 1 6546,001. Six Come on, focus up. For six thousand one hundred dollars, are you kidding me? Look, I understand that, that that is still expensive. I get that that's not a cheap price tag, but in comparison to everything, all the other Silver Age number ones and Silver Age first appearance grails, that is cheap in comparison. Okay, let's keep going here. Um. Daredevil 3.0, 2,300 for a 3.0. Like, okay, X-Men 1, 
2.5 for what is that? 5,300. Now, let me check the census, okay? Go collect X-Men 1. X-Men's X-Men 1 census just for CGC, we're not going to count CBCS. CGC 4,645. Okay, now let's go to Daredevil 1. We're doing market market research here. Live, what is this live for me? Not live for you. Live on cam as you guys are watching. Minimal editing just to, to cut out the, the dull parts. Let's see here. Census. 5,234 great, like that's not much more than, uh, I closed the other window. What was the other one? 4,645 CGC graded for X-Men 1. 5,234 graded, so that's like what, roughly 600 more copies? Like just about 600 more copies, give or take? Uh, a little bit less than 600 copies actually? 589, 589 more copies? If my mouth is right, I'm really bad at math and, I mean, forget about back of the napkin math. Anyways, Daredevil 1, crazy underpriced. Um, yeah, so, uh, my camera's about to die. Um, not much going on here. Uh, Loco's got some really cool books. Not much that I'm into, but his books are flying off the shelf. So good for him. Uh, we'll probably check in tonight. Ah, so we might check in tonight for Tasty Comics, but I got some work to do later. So uh, hopefully I can check in for a little bit. And then I'm kind of busy tonight. And then I have a uh, boxing thing tonight. So uh, we'll see how much more we get today. But I'm hoping to get together with my father-in-law again tomorrow. Uh, we'll see i just have some other tentative plans that are seemingly going to fall through so we'll see what happens with that but uh yeah anyways day two at con uh a little rant about why daredevil one is underrated i hope y'all benefited from that and get a copy of one of the greatest comics in existence all right so i was just talking to my camera for like five minutes straight i didn't even like bother to hit the record button kind of an idiot but uh anyways we're here watching at con this is kind of my at con vlog it's obviously a little bit different because i'm not there in person but uh right now we got uh, uh trader bill hosting uh tasty comics that's an incredible book right there let's see what this price is because i might grab it if the condition is nice and the price is where i like it first line cover the bondage cover as well they're about to get that cauldron or whatever dropped on them Five five. Nah, there was one yesterday, last night in the Silver Age sale. I think it was like eight five for one fifty. Think I feel like I could find a better price on it. Um, I already have like a mid. It's probably like a five 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 zero copy, so I'm not like itching to get uh one super soon. But um, yeah. Anyways, Tasty Comics. If you guys are not familiar incredible seller he is like <coughs> the king of golden age pulps stuff like that he's got a mix of everything as you can see on his wall but the dude has just got some crazy golden age books that i've never seen uh before uh, i'm not super into golden age i don't have any golden age books um i mean i have some tencent flash but no because first appearance of barry allen was yeah no those are still silver age uh, I don't have any ten cents. Uh, what's the other Flash? I can't think of his name. Anyways, I have a ten cent Barry Allen Flash, not um, the other guy. I don't know. Why I can't think of his name, but um, yeah. So uh, I like just watching a stream because I learn a lot about uh, Golden Age and stuff like that. Um, but I never like actually buy any. So. Um, but they're cool to look at, man. I just, they're not in my price range. And I feel like if I knew more, like, I know who LB Cole is. I don't know why he's so popular. So, therefore, the, like, price for his covers doesn't make sense to me. I'm not knocking it at all. I'm literally just saying that I'm ignorant about it. So, um, therefore, like, I don't desire them and I don't understand it. But, um, 
doesn't mean that I don't appreciate it because the art is dope. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't bought anything from Tasty Comics yet. I have in the past. I actually, last at Con, which was back in November, I bought Fantastic Four Annual 1 from him. And he said it was going to be a 3-5. And I believe it came back a 4-5. Oh, no, it came back a 5-0. Oh, yeah, and he said it was going to be a 3-5. So um, I did press it a little bit. Uh, but came back 5-0 off white to white stoked on that um, so yeah obviously great dude undergrader great collection of everything uh, any collector will benefit from what he's got so uh, yeah I'm just gonna keep watching don't know if I'll buy anything but uh, yeah I guess we'll see what happens it's a great book I do like that book not a book I would have there's some books that I want. I don't know if you guys have this. There's some books that I want that I just... They're super cool, but I just wouldn't, like... 75140 that's not unreasonable. It's a reasonable price, but I just wouldn't pay it. But then I wouldn't be content with a facsimile either. So I'm just, like, never going to have it in my collection. I want this book so bad. It's probably over a thousand, huh? Three fifty. Every so often, chat says something. I wish I had space for magazines. I don't really. I wouldn't even know where to. I don't. I, okay, so I have some magazine-sized books, like um, the Last Ronin and some other. Like a, I have a Blade magazine and some other stuff. I don't. I don't have a box. Like they're literally just sitting in a stack in my closet. I just. I should buy a box for it, but it's like I don't have enough yet to buy a box for it. So it's not really worth it. But is a 5 for I like that skull. Small little 25 cent date stamp there. Blends in well with the blue background. What a great cover. That is That's that's super cool. Alright, let's check this wall scan. Silver no. Surfers right, are right, cool. Why is that <coughs> why is Silver Surfer 1 so expensive? It's not even the best surfer cover out there. The Cyclops one is cool. Whoa, 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 what is that cover? You're gonna ban me on YouTube for that, bro. Look at that haunting thrills, bro. It is such a sweet cover. Superman 1 Lightweight, 95k? That's crazy when you start negotiating, like, you start negotiating with a book like that, you are not, like, you're going from, like, 9, like, what was it 90k 95k you're going to like yo i'll give you 86.5k like you're just taking thousands off it's crazy all right i got to get ready for boxing so uh looks like we're not getting anything from tasty tonight um but yeah i'm gonna go punch some pads um yeah we'll be back with silver age in a little bit so uh, yeah, see you guys later. We're back from boxing. Uh, I ate, got protein in me, showered, I'm clean, ready to go. I uh, checked in on the stream when I got home. Uh, wasn't really anything that I was, uh, well, I guess it's not entirely true. I was trying to get an ASM 122. I was trying to wheel and deal it, honestly. They sold the 171 for some price, I don't remember. So I offered like, oh wait, one. 80 I think is what they sold the 121 for so I offered like 10 more than that I think yeah I threw in the offer um they countered the counter was I was cool with it um but I asked him if I could see the book and so when he pulled out the book he told me that there was light water damage on the back as soon as I heard that I pretty much checked out I don't want to deal with that so tomorrow will be kind of hard though uh, because I got a little bit of work to do in the afternoon and then right after work I have another boxing session and then after that uh, I'm gonna link back up with my father-in-law and we're gonna catch the end of the Friday night so yeah we'll see what happens probably not gonna buy anything uh, but yeah that was at con day two but anyways I hope you guys are enjoying uh, this vlog so far obviously a little bit different but it's kind of fun I'm like in my house chilling doing my thing it's a good time generally so uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys tomorrow, Friday. Okay. That? No? Nah. Maybe when the sky goes out. The sky, the sun goes down. <laughs> the sky goes out. The sky out. goes out. We're doomed, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is day...
three, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, day three, back on. Haven't had any time to check in, so now we're tapping in here with Collector Supreme. Honestly, I don't know who Dan Stevens is, and he Dave, should, Dave Stevens is the, that his name? the artist Dave? Yeah, yeah he's, he's like pop. Well, I mean, he's obviously been around since before I was born, but I feel like I don't know where his books became yeah desired what happened i don't know what happened i mean it was <laughs> i remember him from the 80s you know he did all like the good girl covers in the 80s stuff like that but uh yeah i don't know all of a sudden it did seem like that um i just never seen a dave stevens book ever <laughs> like i know and now they they fly off the shelves yeah, they're, they're like gone everywhere. i would say behind um the the seventies the 70s Neil Adams and Bernie Wrights in DC horror is the first thing that goes the yeah. thing going that I've seen, and then the Dave Seam is right behind it right Just boom yeah okay wait I got to show you guys we have three Atcon cameras Atcon streams going <laughs> okay, this is my phone <laughs> and I have my AirPod connected and then we're watching on the monitor and then Mr Longbox has his phone in which he has his iPhone connected. And then, I don't even know why we have this. <laughs> it's, it's like a sports bar. You just want to have it every angle. <laughs> and then, we got the Warriors game. <laughs> so, yeah, it is a sports bar at this point. One thing that's really fun about AtCon is, is uh, it's just a very welcoming experience. Um, sometimes, not to like bag on, on regular cons, but um, it always feels, when you come up to a table, like it's a... Um, you are entering some form of combat, like either you're interrupting them or, you know, they size you up before they even hand you the book. And it's just a weird, it's different, yeah. you know. Yeah. Not every, not every dealer, but. I mean, I, I, ha I had that dealer, remember last year? Yeah, he was, he was, I, he was giving you a stink yeah, eye. Yeah, he was giving me side eye. <laughs> I saw an LCS post today. I don't know if it was intentional because I don't even know if they know about Atcon and stuff. But they said, they tweet, or they didn't, they posted on the Instagram story. Don't forget to visit. Don't forget to buy comics from your LCS. It's always better to see and handle the comic in person or something like that. And it's like, sure, but if you're not offering books like this, you can't really compete. Like, no. of course, obviously, the ideal situation is I'm literally in this guy's room, watching him put all the books up, and then when I'm interested, oh, can I see that one? And then he turns around and hands it to me. Like, right. But at the end of the day, if you're not a shop that is able to match what, how, however many different sellers, it's like 10, 15 different sellers right. from totally different places in the country with a wide variety of inventory, like you're just one LCS in one location. Like you just can't handle that type of diversity. No, you can't. So you can't. it's like, yeah, support your LCS for sure, but don't go knocking. No, you. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, LCSs don't necessarily... I mean, it depends, but I think their I think their bread and butter is the new issues, you know. So, they, how much how much floor space or wall space can they really give to back issues? Yeah. You know, so you know, once in a while, I'll, I'll buy a a back issue from an LCS, but usually it's at a, it's 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 on it's on Instagram somewhere. It's where I'm getting the best deal. It's where I'm yeah. getting the most variety. But I'm not buying any new books on Instagram. That's where I go to the LCS. That's right, how I support yeah. the LCS if I want to get a graphic novel. You know, a pull list and all everything that's new that I like, that's where I get it. Yeah. But I don't know how they're staying open. I really don't. Yeah. FF5, oh, dude. Punch holes, two punch holes in it. Oh, yes, I've seen this one. Yeah. No, but it's good to go. You can just stick it in your binder, man. It's already, like, ready. It's already ready. <laughs> it's already got built in display things. <laughs> this is the next grail that I'm hunting for, but. And the 3.0 is about. It's a good price. That's a good price. But the IAPL on two drill holes is yeah. not great, right? Like, even that, like, if that didn't have um, the holes in it, that still might be a 3 hill. I don't know how much that impacts it, but that's about what 3 holes are looking like. We've been, we've, been, we've been watching for, you know, focusing on this for about 10 minutes, and your grail has already showed up in the grade <laughs> you want. That's what we're saying. Like, Literally. That, what are the odds of you walking into, into a shop and finding that? Yeah, no. You know. Yeah. I wonder how much of it has to do with just like quality of writing, mm. like modern stories and stuff. Like people just, there's very few like writers that like jump out 
in yeah. the modern era, at least. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking like Chip Zdarsky, uh, Hickman, Hickman, uh, Jason, Jason Aaron. Is that his first name? I, I know think, his last name's Aaron. I think it's Jason Aaron and Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns. Yeah. Controversial guy right there. Yeah, not a lot of. Now it's more like Art Germ, Jenny Frisson. Yeah, yeah you kind of go more for variant covers. And like th those, like, at, th at that point, those artists are now creating exclusive covers that you can only buy online that they're not shipping to LCSs. Right. And so I was like, you can go pick up like the, you know, Art Germ cover A or David Nakayama cover A, but the more expensive one that's probably going to go up in value mm -hmm. a year from now is the ones you got to get on websites. That's right. So, and, and yeah, you can see those like at, even at WonderCon, they had a whole display where it was one of the people who, one of the oh, yeah, major players, comics. yeah, that, yeah. that commissions these and they had them all there for 15 uh, for the, for the one with the trade dress and 30 for the, yeah. for the version variants. But you know they that that they have to sell a bunch of their stuff just direct online too because yeah it's too expensive yeah just to be reserving time at cons. Uh, JNS, I need to record on my phone. JNS Collectibles has a Iron Fist number one in a nine six four four hundred right and <clears throat> Mister Long Box over here is an Iron Fist collector. Yeah, here we go. Look. <clears throat> Iron Fist 2 and a 9.4. Nice. Iron Fist 3 and uh, a 9.4. No, it's just 13, but 9.4. Oh, 4. 13. And then Iron Fist 15 and a 9.2. First burn work on new X-Men. Storm looks title. sick. Oh, what is that Wolverine suit? I'm telling you, it's early. It's early, early. All right, hold on. Hold this one. Let me bring that one close to the camera. Look at this Wolverine suit. That is... Oh, he's got Iron Fist 2. He's selling Iron Fist 2 right now for raw 30. Wow. But, uh, we don't collect Silver Age X-Men because they're lame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, sorry, collect collectible world. Unless it's a uh, Scarlet Witch or Magneto yeah. cover. I, I just love to say it. They, 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 were, they, were so, they were so bad that before they even got 60 issues in, they just went to reprints. <laughs> They're like, nobody's reading it. We're not going to de dedicate any talent to it. Who wrote, Who was writing it? I thought I thought it was the, the same team. Lee and Kirby? At least it was, it was Kirby and Lee at first. But I mean, Stan Lee's, his writing is pretty cheeky. Well. But that was the time. <laughs> right. And the way they did it was kind of weird. Uh, Kirby really wrote it because Kirby... Kirby did all the drawing and put sound bubbles in, I mean, uh, speech bubbles, and then handed it to Stan Lee, and Stan Lee put the words in. Oh. So, I mean, you really could say it was it was, it was, was all Kirby. Yeah. Didn't they beef? Didn't Kirby, like... Eventually. Yeah. You know. All right, for the first time in AtCon vlogging history, Mr. Longbox has made a claim. We weren't recording, unfortunately. But he claimed to FF9... Three five, three five, three five for two fifty. Two fifty. Count. Uh, it was, it was a, a counter. It was two ninety. He wanted two eighty, something like that. Yeah. For two, he countered two fifty. <clears throat> Had to pull the trigger. Man. Yeah. I, I've always wanted to get in the top ten of FF. There's my entry point. There you go. Then now you have. No, you don't have me beat yet. No. I still have FF six. No, FF two is the one that's uh you know. That'll beat me. I'm going to have to dig deep for that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's FF3? FF, oh, first, uh, first, first uh, appearance of the costumes. That's expensive, uh, too. And FF4? First Silver Age subby. FF2 is actually the cheapest of all yeah. of them. <laughs> to tell you the truth. Oh, no, maybe FF3, but because FF2 is the first scrolls since, uh, since Secret Wars. Yeah, but that cover's not as cool as the rest of them. I love that cover, dude. The really? yellow cover with the, with them in like their street clothes is so tight. It's uh, so cool with the with the scrolls looking all dopey on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> but FF Nine is the uh, first crossover. I mean, the first third third sub subby. Because first is four, second is six, as you know. Yep. And then nine is third. Three point five is dope. I'll take that. I'll take that. But FF Six is the first supervillain team up. 
Yeah, that's a good book. So, there. and second, by the way, second Doom. In case anybody was yeah, wondering. second Doom. But um, like, that's a big deal for me to get in the top ten because I've had FF eleven for thirty five years and I've never been in the top ten. But number number eleven, that's uh, don't sleep on it. It is the first Impossible Man. <laughs> that you're uh... considered the most the one of the one of the most powerful uh, villains in the MC in the, in the in the Marvel universe. That's your uh, claim to fame and your copium. That's for... right, it's my copium. CGC five O. Get it. <laughs> Which I think was a cheap grade. I think I chipped on that grade. I'm resubmitting. I saw, I saw something about Impossible Men recently. I don't remember what it was though. Who the the JIMs under a hundred are nice. Yeah. So that's the second claim of the night for me because I did also get the the second appearance of the Hulk prototype Journey right. to Mystery sixty six for yeah. seventy five. Stacking them. Didn't I claim something? I forgot. Oh, the first moves of Valkyrie. That's right. I sniped, but didn't really snipe that other guy. All right, we made it to the end, and now we are getting to the unboxing. First of all, I want to say thank you so much if you've stuck around this entire time and have made it to this part of the video. It means a lot to me. I try my best to... Uh, just produce content that is kind of pushing the boundary in the comic book YouTube space. Um, so if you see that and appreciate that, go ahead and hit that like button for me. It means a lot. And subscribe if you haven't already. These are all of my AtCon buys. Um, I know I didn't have a lot of footage of me actually buying a lot of the books. Um, but it's literally, what month is this? Middle of May. Almost the end of May. And AtCon was in early April, and I have waited this long to unbox. Honestly, some of these books, I forgot what they were. Uh, so let's get into unboxing them. I'm going to open this one second to last, actually. Um, I'm an idiot because I stripped off the shipping label so I don't know dox myself. But I also don't know who the books are from. But I feel like I'll be able to remember once I see the books. So let's see. So this is the first... Oh. This one's from Loco for Comics. So, yo, if you put stickers on your little uh, Gemini mailers, then YouTubers who unbox have a better chance of remembering. So, I guess remember that. I think I got a couple banger books um, at a really, really good price. Um, I think these... Looks like there's three books in there. I think I remember two of them. Potentially the third, but... Let's see. All right, so we have Daredevil issue number 48. It's a little bit of a pencil mark, but um, a really great spine. We've got Daredevil number 27, uh, a yellow cover with Spider-Man on the cover. Honestly, I think I paid $35 for both of those books. He did like, at, at, at the end of his sale, he did like a fire sale, like a BOGO. I think it was buy one, get one half off. So that's kind of what happened there. And then this book. Spider Girl issue number zero. Um, I haven't had this one. I know this one's kind of like gone up and down in the market of popularity, but he had it for a really great price. So, at least compared to what I've seen it go for, so I decided I would grab it from him. So, those were our three pickups from Logo for Comics. Now, if you've got any knife enthusiasts, let me know what your go to pocket knife is. I use this uh, Benchmade. I don't honestly know the make. My old boss kind of um, got me into. Uh, got me to buy this knife because it is uh, yeah we were just unboxing a lot of stuff and I didn't have a pocket knife at the time so he was like yo let me hook you up so he found me a good deal on that but yeah let me know what pocket knife you guys are using if you guys are pocket knife enthusiasts okay no sticker on this one but that's okay I'm sure I will remember oh, okay this uh, these books are from card gems believe that's his Instagram handle. Okay, so I <laughs> I remember these books because I woke up earlier than I normally do one day, and which means I caught the early portion of AtCon. Cool, so I've got this um, Weapon X Wolverine issue number 72. Uh, it's just a skull cover, um, but pretty rad. Also, didn't, I think I, I, think I bought this before X-Men 97 came out, so this is like, I bet you this book has probably gone up since, but uh, I love skull covers as most people do. Um, and then this book I have been looking for a long time. 
This one is not the condition I wanted in, but I just was kind of getting my foot in the door. This is Avengers 144, first appearance of uh, Hellcat. So, shout out Car Gems for hooking it up there. Okay, this one I thankfully left a little bit of the um, shipping label on, and so this one says it's from JNS Collectibles. So I don't really remember what books I got from him, but I remember one of them. Um, it was actually <laughs> he invoiced me, and this book wasn't on there. And so I had asked him what had happened, and he said somebody else claimed it. So I ended up having to go into the the live stream VOD on the Elite Comics Instagram page, scroll through the VOD to find when I claimed it, and then I had to take the clip that I did in fact claim this book. Ali called out my name, and that's what they wrote down. So it took them a couple days to kind of figure it out. I don't really know what happened, um, but they ended up sorting it and putting it back into my claim, so... Thanks so much for doing that. It actually happened to me twice this at con. Uh, the other time happened with Silver Age Comics and they were super quick also to fix the issue. Oh, right. Okay, I totally forgot about this book. So this first book is another skull cover actually and it's uh, Detective Comics issue 437, 20 center. This thing is fire. I'd actually never seen this book um, before this claim sale. So it was an insta grab for me. I didn't negotiate that one. Um, and then we got this Avengers 83. I think I paid 60 for this book. Um, I've always loved this cover. And most of the time I see it like pretty beat up. This one's actually in pretty good condition. He has it at a 6.0. But um, honestly it kind of looks a little bit better than that. Bro is just yelling at me. I open the door and he just stands there and looks at me like I'm dumb. Say hi. Okay. So anyways. This is Avengers 83. I haven't read this story actually, so it kind of looks like Valkyrie has beat up all of them, except the women maybe, I don't know. But uh, I just like that. Um, they have defeated the male chauvinist pigs. I think it's kind of funny. So, uh, shout out JNS Collectibles. All right, and this one is a slab actually. I, I don't remember if I bought any raw books from him. Nope, just looks like I bought just this. Oh, no, I did, there is a raw book. It's another skull cover actually. I've never seen this one before this claim sale, and this is actually Swamp Thing number 56. So it's like Swamp Thing in the eye of a skull. Uh, pretty dope cover. Higher grade, he didn't write down, and I don't remember what I bought it at, but looks to be an 8.5 or higher. Maybe 9.2 or higher. I don't like the 9.0 grade, so I just never refer to it. Um, I just think 9.0 looks so ugly on slabs. Super dope. Swamp Thing, 56. I have 50 and 49, I believe. Um, so that one fits in real nicely. This one I actually have as a raw copy. Uh, it's probably like a 2025. It's beat. Um, it's got a horrible spine roll on it. I probably got it for like a few bucks at a, uh, I think it was at a local comic shop that I picked it up at. So uh, this guy actually had this book in a 9.4 white pages for a really, really good price. Um, and this is Marvel Premiere issue number 19. First appearance of Colleen Wing. Sorry for all the light reflections. That's better if I go up. So. And apparently, I saw the actress who played her in the Iron Fist show. I'd never seen the show. Um, she said that she'd like to come back. So, you know, a little bit of uh, MCU uh, turbulence um, for that character with her saying that. But I don't know. I've never seen the show. I've heard kind of mixed things about it. Um, I've only seen The Defenders, Daredevil, Punisher, and the first season of Jessica Jones. So I'm stoked to have this one. I think um, I, I would also love to get Marvel Premiere 15 um, because I think Iron Fist just as a character is super cool and I would love to see him done well in the Marvel movies. I would love to see this fit. I don't want to see a modernized costume, whatever you want to call it. I want to see like a crazy dope. I want to see a comic fit in a comic book movie. Like I think that's one thing that DC does really well is they're not afraid to kind of just embrace the goofiness of a lot of these uh, outfits for these characters. So um, I think that Marvel could just stop with the uh, nanotech and stop with the like ant-man like every suit just looks like an iteration of the ant-man suit with different colors and stuff so i think they should stop with that and just you know what the comic costume is um 
that's what they should do in my opinion. I, I literally forgot about this one. This is the one at the beginning that I said I'm going to save this one for the end. Um, this is actually an AtCon exclusive Shattered Comics variant. So uh, limited production on this one. Uh, which I typically don't buy into just that whole like limited run thing. But this is a book that I have loved and have wanted to add to my collection um, in the uh, like the OG one. So this is actually a facsimile. Shattered Comics version. Ooh, okay, we got really nice packaging here. Let's see. This comes in this really nice little like envelope and it came with this uh, anti-hero gallery sticker which they're the ones that do the shattered comics I have a couple of uh, there's I, think I have a daredevil 158 and another one as well so this is gonna be two copies <clears throat> and this is um, Raphael the first appearance of Casey Jones so this is the first one and then this is the second one. One of these is more, like, less produced than the other. I don't remember which. But uh, one of my favorite uh, TMNT covers. I love Casey Jones. I just think he's the coolest dude. I can't wait. I can't wait for Casey Jones uh, to hopefully be in TMNT 2, the animated movie. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that first one, y'all need to go watch it because it's so, so good. At Con Exclusive Comics. Raphael, first appearance of Casey Jones. Yeah. All right, y'all. And um, that is all of the shipments that I got in. But now I actually have books that I went and picked up directly from the seller. And I actually went and picked these up from Silver Age Comics in Astoria, Queens, New York City. I actually filmed a video with him while I was there. But for now, Let's get into the unboxing of what I bought from Silver Age Comics. Alrighty, so here we go with the books from uh, Silver Age. I got quite a few, including one big grail that I've been waiting on for a long time. Um, and that grail was actually the one that I was telling you guys earlier that they said another person claimed. So as you can assume, I was really hoping that they were gonna honor the clip that I found of me getting the claim, which they did, so I'm thankful for that. But anyways, let's start off and we will go from uh, smaller books to bigger books. So this is uh, one that you guys saw claimed in this video. This is Spider-Man manga issue number five, and that came in tandem with uh, the final issue, which is the harder copy to find, lower print run. So I got two of these Spider-Man mangas. Okay, so next up, uh, we have an iconic Neil Adams cover. Um, one that I've been waiting for uh, for a while, just kind of waiting for the right price, right uh, condition to come around. And we got it. And this is Detective Comics, issue number 422. I don't know, it's kind of cut. My cat is eating a box. But this is an iconic Batgirl cover with the like a Batman silhouette right there in the back, super sweet. Stoked to have this one finally in the collection. Okay, and this one honestly was not a book that was on my radar at all, but this thing is the widest cover I have ever seen for a somewhat early X-Men. Um, and this is actually X-Men issue number 43. Um, I wish, I, I mean, I hope that you guys can like see how white that is. Um, but on the live stream, like, you were able to tell, like, it was jumping out. And in person, I mean, it does not disappoint. Like, this looks like it was printed just recently. Um, and a Magneto cover, like I said, the only good X-Men books are Magneto and Scarlet Witch covers uh, before the whole Claremont Burn run. Um, aside from that, Silver Age X-Men is kind of... But, yeah, Magneto cover white 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 super happy to add this one even though i wasn't expecting it but you know that's that's what comic collecting is sometimes is just finding a book that just kind of shakes up your whole ideology of what your collection is going to look like so i'm happy to have that one okay these next two i also bought um in a bundle um you guys will recognize these instantly this is the thing in spider-man just an iconic uh jim starlin cover with the thing spider-man and thanos um, and a bunch of the floating heads on there on the right. And 
With this book, I also got The Death of Thanos. Again, stoked to have both of these. Um, they're just like dope Thanos covers, especially this one. Uh, oh, and um, Adam, what's his name? Adam Warlock, right there too. So yeah, great, great books. All right, and the final book of my AtCon purchase, um, the grail that I've been hunting for for a long time that is finally in my collection uh, that I had almost lost come the time of invoice, but thankfully we have it, is Marvel Super Heroes issue number 20, the Doctor Doom origin story and first appearance of Valeria. Um, just an absolutely iconic cover. Um, beautiful. So I actually got a good deal on this. Um, I think he had it for 300 and I offered 250 and he accepted. The only real problem with this book is kind of down in this corner. I don't know if you all can see, but there's a little bit of some like crease color break there. And there's also a crease color break up here. Aside from that, there's minimal, and I mean minimal, spine let's see i can count one two three four i count four uh color breaks on the spine so yeah a little bit of pen up here but i don't i don't really care about pen on covers so um i'm i'm stoked to finally have this here in the collection so yeah dr doom marvel super bros issue number 20. So that was my uh, haul and uh, at con unboxing. Let me know which book you guys thought was the coolest and let me know which one you thought was not the coolest one. And you finally made it to the end of this video. It means a ton. If you've watched all the way through all 40 something minutes, you're a champion. Thank you so much. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys watch these videos. I probably should have put this at the beginning, but just so you guys know, this video is not sponsored or affiliated with Elite Comics in any way, shape, or form. I made this just like I would any other Comic Con vlog. I actually tried to reach out to Ali a couple of times and uh, I didn't hear back. I did message in the middle of uh, At Con once. Um, somebody else responded, said that they would let him know. Didn't hear back, reached out to him again a few weeks later didn't hear back so um, I still want to try to get Ollie on the channel get an interview with him if you'd like to see that comment down below let me know if I should interview him what you guys want to know from Ali but again thank you guys so much for watching it means a ton don't forget to like subscribe hit the notification bell and I will catch you on the next one peace